right, welcome to the second part of our notes, slopes of secant lines. Find the average rate of change of the function at the indicated x values. And as you guys can see, there are no x values that are indicated. We will do that together. Uh, what might concern you is this statement, indicate units of measure. Um, I put that here because this is something that you will see on an AP test often. And uh, in this context right here, it might be a little strange, but what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to label a couple of the graphs um, with some units. Probably won't make sense, but that's okay. I just want us to get used to um, looking at graphs and, and thinking about indicating units of, units of measure. So um, uh, some of these um, labelings, uh, etc., on the axes, the labels won't show up. Um, I haven't gotten that advanced yet, so we're just going to write them in and then follow the directions up here. All right, let's consider this first graph. Uh, we're going to consider this quadratic, 2x squared plus 1. Uh, and let's go ahead and indicate some of these uh, x values. So we're going to call this 1, and we're going to call this x coordinate 2. All right, so what we're going to do is, uh, and let me go back and let's label the axes too. Let's just say that perhaps this is a meters uh, versus seconds graph. Let's say it's a distance versus time graph. So let me just say that perhaps we had seconds here along the x-axis and uh, meters labeled up here. All right, so just kind of bear with me. Now, I know time isn't ever negative. Unfortunately for some of us, we'd like it to be, but uh, we can't go back in time, but let's not just get wrapped up in that right now. Just for the sake of knowing how to indicate units of measure and tackling that kind of objective, uh, let's just ignore the fact that we have graph that's contained in the second quadrant. Um, so uh, we've got a meter versus seconds graph, a distance versus time graph. Uh, we've indicated the x values at 1 and 2. Let's go up to the graph. Label the points. Um, and, of course, we could use the equation, since we're given an equation, we can use the equation to help us uh, locate these points. Uh, when I evaluate the equation at 1, I get 3, so I'm, I'm trying to be somewhat accurate there and label that point. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and um, label it 1, 3. Okay. Uh, if I were to evaluate the equation at 2, uh, I would get 2 times 2 squared, or 8. 8 plus 1 is 9, so I'm going to have to go up pretty high. One, two, it brings us about to right here. Okay, if I can get that on there. Okay, so that's the ordered pair two, nine. Okay, now let's go ahead and show a graphical representation um, of the average rate of change. If we connect to the earlier notes, average rate of change meaning secant line. So all I'm asking you when I say show a graphical representation of the average rate of change, I'm just saying Draw in the secant line. And if you have a straight edge, a ruler, your ID, anything, you might want to go ahead and lie them up against or lay it up against these two points here and, and connect them. Again, it's not going to be good, but I'm going to do the best I can to draw in a secant line, a line through these two points. Okay. Oh my goodness. Trust me, it's not as easy as it looks. All right. That is not a tangent line. It's a secant line. Perhaps I should have chosen some different points. All right. Here we are. We've, uh, we need to find the average rate of change. So I'm coming over here and I'm making a connection to my brain. I'm thinking slope, average rate of change. And I'm going to go ahead and put a, a subscript here. I'm just going to put um, SEC for secant. Just to remind myself, it's a way to keep things organized, that that is a secant line. Okay, easy enough. So what do we do here? Well, difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. Okay, and I'm going to pause here because this is where I'm going to go ahead and try and um, bring in another objective. It says indicate units of measure. Why not in our work go ahead and include units? Sometimes it's very cumbersome. Um, to include units in our work, but at other times uh, it's convenient and easy and a wise decision. For example, the difference of the y's, well, what are the y units? Well, the y units are meters, so why not in your work just go ahead and put meters here? Difference of the x's, well, the labeling along the x-axis is seconds. 
Okay, so then there's no thought at the very end um, of what the units would be. We're using them in our work and naturally it just works out to where that's going to be part of our answer. Okay, so the slope of the secant line is 6 over 1 or just simply 6 meters per second. Okay, it's the average rate of change from uh, time equals 1 to time equals 2 seconds. Okay, easy enough, and I, and I know you understand that, but I'm really building somewhere. Okay, let's look at this second graph down the first column here. Okay, notice there's no labeling on here, so I don't want you to assume that it is the same graph that we had previous. Now, just a little secret here, let you in on that. It is the same graph, but we're going to pretend it's different. Okay, so let's look at this graph of f of x, unnamed. Okay, let's find the average rate of change uh, of the function at the indicated x values. Well, again, there's no x values. I, I need to work on that. Okay, uh, let's just go ahead and put 1 and 2 in here again. But notice now I don't have a specific equation. I have a generic equation, f of x. So all I can do is just locate the graph at these x values. So I'm going to come up here and just put um, the two points on here. Okay, and it might not be the same as the previous graph. It could be different. I could have made some slight changes to the equation. Okay, but here are the two points that we're looking at. So how do we label them? Well, the input is 1 and the output is the function evaluated at 1, whatever that function is. And likewise here, this is 2 comma f of 2. Okay. Again, if we're um, labeling our axis with some units, I could say this is seconds and perhaps this is meters or feet. I could do feet this time for the y-axis. Okay. And again, this part of the graph would have no meaning um, for us. All right, so um, show the average rate of change. Provide a graphical representation of the average rate of change. Again, I'm asking you to um, draw in the secant line between these two points. Goodness. Okay, and let's calculate the average rate of change. Well, we're not going to be able to find it numerically. We're just going to have a representation of it. So, slope of the secant. I don't have specific y values, so it's just the notation. If I'm indicating units of measure, this would be um, a good place for us to include our units. The change in y would be the change in feet. And then the difference of the x's okay, with the x units in the denominator. Okay, so finding a slope, we're going to have y units over x units. And that's it. That's all we can do. Well, we don't know what the y values are, so we're pretty much at a standstill other than the fact that I could subtract here and get just one. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it just like this. Okay. All right, let's just continue. Okay, I'm going to drop the indicate units of measure now because I think you understand the idea. All right, let's find the average rate of change at the indicated x values here. Well, what I've done is now I'm moving away from 1 and 2. I don't know what these tick marks represent. Again, I don't have a specific equation for this graph, for this function, so I'm just going to call it y equals f of x. These are the two x values. Okay. Well, how do I find the average rate of change um, from c to x? Well, I'm going to come up to the graph, plot the point, plot a point here. Again, let's label. So this is c comma f of c, and then of course up here x comma f of x. Perhaps I should have chosen a different um, x value besides x, x here. That looks like the function, and the function are all the x values. Um, let's go ahead and draw in the average rate of change or a graphical representation of that. Goodness. Ooh, better. <laughs> okay, and then let's get um, an expression that represents the slope of that secant line. Difference of the two y values over the difference of the two x values. 
Okay. I'm building. I'm going somewhere. I promise. Let's go back up here to the top one now. Same idea. Again, we don't know the uh, equation for this function, so we'll just call it y equals f of x. Okay, I'm going to label this tick mark x of 1 and this tick mark x sub 2. So what I want you guys to do, and I'll check tomorrow, is okay, I want you to find the average rate of change of this function from x sub 1 to x sub 2. So using these three previous graphs as an example, I want you to go up, find the points, label them, and then calculate the slope of the secant line. All right, and then let's look at this fifth example here. I'll do this one with you guys, and I'll leave you to do the sixth one, and we'll check it tomorrow. Or the next day we come into class. Okay. Oh, goodness, goodness. Come back down here. What's going on there? Okay, y equals f of x. Another new graph. What's going to be interesting is this labeling. Okay, now what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you the labeling on this particular tick mark. And I'm going to say that at this tick mark, we're going to call this value A. Okay, well, I'm not going to give you this information for this tick mark. What I'm going to give you is some additional information. I'm going to tell you that the distance between these two consecutive tick marks is H. So just think about that for just a second. If this tick mark is labeled A, and the distance off of A, I'm going to call H to the next consecutive tick mark, the next tick mark. If that distance is H, what do you think that tick mark is labeled? Well, that X value would be represented by A plus H. Okay. So like the previous few examples, we're going to come up to the graph. We'll label the ordered pair a comma f of a. Okay, now right here at this tick mark, a plus h, whatever value that is, the x coordinate is a plus h. The y coordinate will be the function, whatever it is, evaluated at a plus h. So I want to kind of get you jump started on that one. So again, same same idea, draw the secant line through these two points, come over here and get a representation of that secant of that secant slope on the average rate of change. Okay. All right, so here's your last example here. Let me give you the tick marks, the indicated x values. You can set it up and we'll check it in uh, class the next time we meet. We're going to call that x. I'm not going to give you the name of this next tick mark here, but I will tell you that the distance between these two consecutive tick marks uh, is going to be labeled delta x, a change in x. Okay, So let's find the average rate of change between x and the tick mark that follows it to the right. Okay. And so we'll be able to check that all together and make sure we're thinking correctly and we're on the right track with this. So just notation. So the previous notes, the ideas of A rock versus I rock, and then this notation here is going to help us in our understanding of how we're going to get um, a, a, a tangent slope, okay, or a slope to it, the slope of a tangent line to a curve. Okay, so what we needed all this notation and background to help us. So I'll see you soon.